This is a quick video to talk to you about vertical forces or vertical dimensioning. And we're looking at plans because we're talking about how the loads come through the structure, through the columns, and to the foundations um, from the roof. And using all those different loads we were talking about, like gravity, dead loads, live loads, this is a typical plan of a the columns and the beams or structural plan that shows here the W shapes, W12, which basically means it's 12, 12 inches high. And then the 53 or whatever the number is, is based on the weight. So many pounds per square foot. You have beams that come across that are attached to the columns. Pretty basic. If you take one of these columns out, then you would need to have you know bigger beams or stronger beams and that's when you work with the structural engineer um, but you can actually get a good layout started with your design it doesn't have to be a grid like this it can have curves in it it can it can have columns that go halfway down it can have openings like this opening over here you can see that we're just using steel to frame around those openings and so on top of those beam girders we have these joists and usually in this plan you can see the way that the joists run and they sit you know on top of those beams that i just showed you and along with the type of joists that are used in this layout so this is the detail pretty um, pretty quick and um, basic to see that the joist here seat sits on this beam and there's several different sizes based on the loads and based on what kind of floor system that you're that you're using a column schedule is makes it so much easier to to understand how far down the columns are going so in your design, if you have a large conference room, but there's a grid of, of structure above it, you would need to then take out a column and then think about the additional support that would have to um, be added above, above that. These column schedules really show it because, um, and I've worked with so many of them, they actually show the different floors so each one of these lines represents the floor so when you look at the column schedule you look over at that page and that specific column based on a number that would be next to that column and you'll see okay that column only goes from the first floor to the second floor but this one goes all the way up so it's a really great way to uh, not only establish the design and what you need to bring to give to the structural engineer so that they can you know size it but um but your awareness of those spaces that need to be open and and others that could be with columns in them so when we talk about high rises or even building structure they're categorized here low rise mid rise and high rise so a low rise is one to four stories with no no ele elevator and then it goes mid-rise 5 to 10 and high-rise 10, 10 or more and they have elevators in them but we're thinking about the dead loads the live loads and all of those loads that would be imposed on a structure like this of course they would get um, harder to work with the taller the building is because of the wind loads especially but uh, also the dead loads that are increasing so the dead loads of the structure may be the principal factor in establishing the structural strategy especially in taller buildings where you have a lot of weight that's starting to build up as you build each of these floors because the gravity and the load itself of the structure are coming through all of those columns and eventually to the um, foundations. Lateral wind and se seismic forces become critical issues as the structure is, is taller, it makes sense. Um, rising the ceiling height does affect the human scale, but it also adds more concern about the structure. Uh, if it's important for us to go from an 8-foot ceiling to a 10, that's great. We just have to know that uh, there may be more support above that as we look at, at the design. 
So there are all these different things that happen when we talk about vertical um, forces and and even more. Uh, but when there are openings, the force is coming down and going around that opening. So I've seen even modern day relieving arches that actually came from the Roman times, but uh, they pick up the full support. So that that arch there that's underneath the relieving arch is, is non-structural because the force is coming down and around it. Uh, core, core belt ar arches, that would be anything that kind of steps out like that. That's what that word core belt um, wor works with or is a part of, but you can see that the loads that kind of go around it. And that's where you see a lot of cracking going on too that's above the the openings um, and, and almost always cracks in this in this way. So in order to support the opening, we do use these lintels. Um, it's called a lintel, but it could be made of just about a lot of different things. You could use a concrete um, bond beam, which is grouted solid. In this case, it's showing these double back-to-back -back, um, steel angles, and they do bear on the wall here six to eight inches uh, so that so that there's something you know that it's sitting on um interior walls can be used as structural load bearing walls and shear walls when you look at this example here instead of having a structure that's all columns if we can design it around having some shear walls we the walls can give it additional support so that it doesn't move um move horizontally but with the lateral loads it, we don't want it to uh, to bend and shift so uh, shear walls work for us in in um, strengthening the the structural grid uh, determine you know how many open and closed walls you need do they need to be solid or can or more open like as an example a storage facility which doesn't really need a lot of windows and we don't want a lot of windows would have a completely different structure than an office space we were we're designing around those those openings um sheathing or plywood does stiffen the wall and make it you know stronger so it is a part of that that load that we're going to be work, working with and looking at Okay, when you're designing, you have your floor layout. We've done this several times in our Design 3 class as we create something that's commercial. Um, we've run out of time a few more <laughs> We've run out of time a couple of times, but we take um, trace paper and put it over the your design and we kind of look at what kind of grid is is happening some people will do this right from the beginning and I think it could limit your your design a little bit but it's but it's good to know it's good to to kind of look at the base and how, how far the span is when you start to become more f um, familiar with what materials are can be used and how how long their spans are like what we did in the past uh, assignment when you looked up um, different materials and how far they can span you, you start to decide what type of material do I want to use um, do I want to have curves in my in my layout uh, do I want it to be a, um, a perfectly symmetrical grid or like this one down here where the grid sizes are changing and uh, and open to open plans so the pattern of the support should be coordinated with the desired form materials and layout of the interior space of the building as you start to design and work with it at this point you really don't have sizes you have more of um, an idea of where the open spaces are and where the columns might be placed in, in your uh, in your overall design so when we're working with these sketches like this we're actually starting to think about you know how does that look th three-dimensionally so we want to think in terms of 3d when we're working with the plan layout and uh, deciding on what type of materials sometimes in the design process we have a lot of different things going on especially unique buildings that are not you know factory style 
grid base, you you might have a roof that's you know so, that's sloped and one that's flat, or um, spaces that are open or a deck that's coming out. So when we when we look at timber um, structures, we also have to think about the connections. So these are some of the things when we're sketching, we need to um, to be aware of those open spaces. Um, we will come back to a structural calculation uh, later in the semester on this. That's my plan. Uh, but when you think about the weight and how it's distributed, we we did at the beginning of the semester we looked at the tributary area when we looked at the gable roof that goes over just a simple house and we said that it's first of all a flat area but when we're talking about a floor like this with columns you have to think about the area around that column it and you kind of take half of half of whatever the distance is to the next support so the tributary area for the load on an interior column extends to lines half the distance to the nearest column in any in all directions so when you take a column out you have to then calculate and work with the loads that are a little bit further going you know to that column so here's here are the different shaded areas and with that information you can start to use um, square footage and dead weights and loads to, to calculate that I have a few simple calculations that we may take a look at towards the end of the semester. So let's take a look at some case studies. This one's pretty interesting. Uh, they added a new floor on top of an existing uh, building and 10,000 square feet of support supported supported by this uh, monumental tree column. So uh, this is a unique column that has these three points that pull in and work with like we just looked at those calculations to pick up the load um, the ceiling you can see of the plaza is all wood um, slat clad which is pretty impressive and shelters this new um, plaza it's in New Jersey and um, it's this asymmetrical tree column that is has a floor to full floor to ceiling 20 foot deep and 100 and 20 foot span to support the large overhang on that fourth floor so um, I thought that this was a really great case study and I think that that would be a great idea for us to to work on as an assignment to find something that was built in the 2000s these are these are newer designs something that um, is unique unique with the design of whatever it is, the columns, the exterior wall system, and just put together a slide like this to show us what the intentions were and some of the st structure of it. Like this building in Tokyo, Japan, it's the same kind of concept as far as um, trees go. I don't know why these are both in the, in the book and there are so many different examples out there of, of amazing structures but this one refers to a diagrid which is refer, which is a, the stru a structure of intersecting members that form a diagonal grid so the the this pattern is based on this overlapping um, tree silhouettes that mimic the branch structures of the nearby elm elm tree and I, I think it I think it's pretty be beautiful when you look at it's it's design definitely something different than an out of the box uh, you know grid structure. So why don't we work on that? Uh, that would be fun, and, you, and some of you are still working on your other projects, getting caught up a little bit. Um, find a project that is unique. Um, I'm going to create a discussion group so that you can post the the building that you're thinking of, and then someone else can take a look at it and make sure that they don't post the same same project. So before you start working a lot on this one slide project, take a look in the discussion group that I'm creating so that you can see if someone else has already picked that building. There's so many buildings out there. It's uh, going to give each of us a different uh, look 
to the possibilities of a structure. Once you lay the trace paper on top, look at where your open and closed walls are, where your column layout is, um, which spaces are, are open. You can think about what the exterior wall um, system might be. The book in this chapter has a lot of examples of different materials, including a curtain wall system, which is really uh, not as much structural as the uh, skeleton like structure behind it but it can make for a beautiful um, aesthetic building design so let's take a look at finding some of those and showing others including myself I thought that these were really interesting designs how structural design can be shown in in the um, in the building design and work with those out-of-the-box um, design options. Awesome. Okay, then, have fun looking for your case study and, put and showing us, um, you know, how, how they use structure to, to um, make, you know, architecture beautiful like this. Awesome. Have a good one.